This is a solid state relay. This is a very common component in uh, industry because um, it's used to interface between control systems and the, the high current, high voltage, things like motors and um, heaters and stuff like that. So um, basically speaking, you've got a low voltage input on one side. In the case of this one, it's 3 to 32 volts DC. And the output, it will switch 24 to 380 volts AC, apparently. And it's got a wee red LED that if, you, if I actually just uh, turn the power on here and uh, just dab this on, the red LED will light to show that it's actually switching the load. And this one came from a generic, I mean, this, this is really common in eBay, but this one came from, oh, this is another hard to pronounce name, E-K-O-N, or sorry, E-K-O-E-N-I-G 21 E. Koenig 21 and it cost a staggering £2.31 which is a fraction of the price of the proper industrial type components although I'm not saying this is an industrial type component but I've used a lot of these in the past um, I've repaired equipment that uses them and this one it feels heavy-ish but it doesn't feel heavy enough it just doesn't feel and it, when you handle it it just doesn't sound and feel right. It's as if it's got a lot more air in it than uh, the ones I'm used to, which are usually solidly potted up with resin. Uh, one of the main things about these is they have to provide proper isolation between the control computers and the industrial equipment, so you want good isolation in them. So um, uh, I'm going to take this one to bits, and this could be messy because uh, if it has got resin and stuff like that, I may have to start cutting it up. So I'll be back in one moment. Well, that's it, duly stripped to bits, and it came apart fairly easily owing to the fact that, as opposed to being full of resin, it just had a drizzle of resin sort of over the components, and some had gone into the base, and I, oh, I thought, you know, that it would have filled right up to virtually the point of these terminals, so everything was completely sealed uh, for electrical isolation and protection against moisture and things like that, but obviously not in this case. Now, um, I... Reverse engineered it by taking a photo of the back and drawing the components on. It's, yes, that's hideous colour. It's just I enhance it to get the best contrast. And the schematic comes out like this. On the input, which is rated to switch the output on with a voltage between 3 and 32 volts. On the input, you have uh, a 6K... A 6,800 ohm resistor in series with this red LED just as an indicator, so its brightness will vary depending on the ingoing voltage. Then you've got one primary resistor of 750 ohms, and then it branches out. Uh, there's a smoothing capacitor, a 180 ohm resistor in series with the LED inside this opto-isolator. And then there's a Zener diode, which is actually way over here. And that means that the purpose of the Zener diode is to limit the current through the LED because as the voltage goes up beyond about, in the case of my testing, as soon as it went above, above about 20 volts, this Zener clamped it down to 5.1 volts. So that said, operating this at the full 32 volts would uh, probably make this resistor quite warm. Um, I could actually do the maths for that right now. Uh, at 32 volts... Minus the 5 volts of the Zener would be 28 volts, divided by 750 ohms, would be 37 milliamps, times the voltage being dropped across the resistor, which uh, I've just said and then I forgot, uh, it's about 27 It would be dissipating a watt at that, and while it is a 1 watt resistor, yeah, leaving that running for any length of time, that would get quite hot. So I'd say, you know, 24 volts, a comfortable level, um, I'd drive that at, which is reasonable enough because 24 volts is a fairly standard industrial control voltage. But um, at the 3 milliamps, uh, I also test it, and uh, three, milliamp, 3 volts, should I say, it was test passing about 2 milliamps through the uh, optwise later, and right up to the um, point that the... Uh, Zener kicked in, the maximum current passing through it is 20 milliamps, so that's reasonable enough. So very simple, it really is just basically um, a resistor in series with the opto-isolator LED with a little bit of extra protection uh, to stop it from being overcurrented. On the output side is a triac. Now this is supposed to be a 25 amp opto-isolator and if it, I mean I don't know if this is a clone or if this is one they actually make, Fotec. I don't know if Fotec is a big company or whatever. 
But um, the 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 track in it is a BTA twelve six hundred B, and that is only rated. It's a very standard track if it's if it's an authentic track, but it's only rated for twelve amps. Um, so I wouldn't run it at twenty five amps. That would be grossly over overrating it. And certainly, going by the uh, data sheet, they're rating the spe the specification for the transient peak current, which is usually about ten times the track rating. Um, it does suggest that. Um, the original probably does have a 25 amp track, but this one just is a 12 amp, which is reasonable enough. You know, if you're not going above 10 amps, that's probably fine. So this thing has a snubber network in the form of a 47 ohm resistor. These are the AC terminals, the, the output. 47 ohm resistor and a 10 nanofar 2kV ceramic capacitor, which is an odd choice. I thought they might have chosen a little... Um, you know, something like a, an actual metalised film type capacitor, but it's ceramic and I suppose that's fine. Uh, there's a 47 ohm resistor and the opto-isolated triac driving the gate of the main uh, triac. And then there's a 180 ohm resistor to pull that down to avoid false triggering. And between the snubber network and that pull-down resistor, that will avoid any sort of rogue uh, triggering from awkward inductive loads and things like that. I mean, it's reasonable enough. It's a fairly typical triac driving format. Um, perhaps not optimised fully for inductive loads. That usually, um, to get reliable triggering in indu inductive loads, you'd have uh, another um, capacitor resistor network that just caused a slight time delay from, from the actual uh, the trigger pulse that just extended it a little bit. The design here is that this triac here, if it's off, then when the trigger, uh, when this triac turns on, the current will flow through this resistor and into the gate of this triac. And uh, as soon as this triac turns on, it immediately clamps that and it latches on. So this resistor only needs to pass current and optize, it only needs to pass current for as long as it takes to trigger that uh, triac. Now, the specification sheet for this also specifies that it is a zero crossing point detection uh, opto-isolator. What this basically means is that if this is the sine wave, it will only trigger at the start of the wave of each waveform and it will latch on. It won't trigger in the middle because that would cause a sudden... It would be like switching a light switch on, you occasionally get a pop out of the radio, um, it, because it's just you've switched it on at the peak of the mains voltage and there's a sudden current surge. So by switching it on at the zero crossing point, that, that uh, limits that. And it's usually built into the opti-isolator, which I, unfortunately I can't identify. Now, isolation on this board is not really great. If I hold it up, and it could have been better, there's silly things like, this is the isolation track here, I'm just going to try and tilt this so I can actually let you see the tracks. So this is the isolation route here. And it's just that wee bit thinner than it could have been. Because, silly things, here's the back of the opto-isolator and there's a track defeating the sort of distance a wee bit. And it's not needed because both those are commoned up there. Um, they could have just done away with this section of track and it would have increased that space considerably. Likewise, this track here could, with a... a the, the, this resistor being moved just back a tiny wee bit, uh, this one could have been moved back further. And because that is the uh, suppression capacitor, its leads already splayed out to go into that hole, so it would have been probably more appropriate. And they could have just, with a little bit more design effort, they could have doubled the clearance space. Now, the assembly of this, the construction, is interesting enough. It's quite a neat housing. I, I do like the metal base. It's quite chunky. It's not just folded or stamped metal. It seems to be a casting. And it's got little lips that seal round the plastic, uh, presumably, so that when it is potted, uh, all the resin just doesn't dribble out. However, when it's assembled, uh, this circuit board, with the triac attached onto it, I, don't, I think the screw is one of the things they put in last. They probably, when they're... Uh, building this, the triac which goes in the back here, is probably, this is probably put in a jig that the triac sits over with the hole, so to keeps it aligned and positioned. And then when they put it in uh, to this case, which goes around this way, I'm not sure how it gets tacked in. It seems a tight fit, but that's mainly because it's already got a bit of resin in there. 
But um, at this point, the track would just be hovering close to the back, and I'm guessing they'd probably stick it in in some way. But certainly the bass plate is sealed round, uh, round the lip, with um, a sort of goopy polymer, like that clear gel, but not silicon, it's the stuff that sets quite quickly, the sort of polymer gel type thing. Um, and I'm guessing it, it sealed round, I'm not sure if they'd put that in the plastic or they'd put it in the metal, but uh, then this is probably applied on like that and clamped down. And then the resin, uh, well for a start, the screw that holds the track on would then be inserted through this hole, through the track tab, and that would clamp it on with the heatsink compound already applied to the track, so that would clamp it onto the back plate. Then I'm guessing that the resin would be poured in here and it would drizzle down through that hole. I'm not sure if they'd tilt it out about while they were doing that to try and make it flow complete to the underside. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if maybe they, this is standard or not. It just seems that li a wee bit light. And I would have thought they would have just filled it with a lot more resin because they've poured some in, but it's just, you know, it's just not much. They've just drizzled it loosely over the components. Um, and you can see on the, the base plate that uh, once they've done that, it's obviously just been put down at an angle and it's all just poured up to one end. But uh, once that's done and it's drizzled with the resin and things like that, they can then uh, put this cap on, uh, which goes over the LED and uh, also just sort of hides all the gubbins in there. And that's your uh, solid state really with the terminals. So, it's not as much isolation as I would expect. Uh, I wouldn't use this in any critical, expensive application, but other than that, you know, it, for a, basically, if you're using a sort of, like, Arduino that nobody was fingering all the contacts and stuff like that, and it was in a dry environment, I would consider this okay, probably, for switching 10 amps um, at, at mains voltage. Um, so it's, it's useful enough, it's, it's certainly... Uh, well, how much did it cost? It would cost, um, yeah, £2.31 including shipping is just ridiculously cheap for something like this. So, um, you know, you can't really complain. You get what you pay for. Um, and if anything, you get a wee bit more than you pay for given that cost. But uh, it's, it's interesting. It was nice to see how it all goes together. I wonder how, I wonder how the real solid state relays are made. I wonder if, you know, if you pop the lid off a uh, standard one, would the resin be right up to the point that maybe it had been... Would it be up to the point that it wasn't just quite dribbling over the edge of these, you know, just to seal up completely but without actually... You're covering the components but not actually uh, leaking out the top of the case. I'm guessing that might be the, the situation, but I'm not 100% sure. However, it was interesting and enjoyable taking that to bits. And yes, I'd consider using them. <laughs>